Hello, and welcome to Expressing Yourself Through Music and Art. My name is Kenna Barima. I'm a songwriter, a musician, and a music teacher. And I'm really excited to be presenting this online educational video series. I, of course, want to thank CADME, the Calgary Association for the Development of Music Education, for making it happen. This series is designed for kids. Any kid. And really any adult, too. Any age, any demographic, anyone who is looking for ways to get creative at the piano, maybe do some crafts, maybe ask yourself some questions, find some answers, and hopefully have some fun too. My intent is to present and to explore foundational music and songwriting concepts, notes, intervals, chords, chord progressions, rhythm, and notation. There are five days worth of short instructional videos. Well, I've tried to keep them short. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes, but I did want to try and keep them short so that every step you can do on your own and at your own pace. There's a PDF to accompany each day, and I want to thank Haley Muir for being responsible for making all the Expressing Yourself Through Music and Art PDFs happen. Thanks, Haley. So each day I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'm going to present some simple ways for you to connect to your body, your emotions, your thoughts, and your creative spark. Each of the five days has five videos for each, five, for each of the steps that will hopefully lead you to some sort of creative musical expression, be it just a bunch of notes or maybe a song. Whatever the end result may be, I want you to feel like I've encouraged you along the way with three things. To connect with yourself, to listen to what you hear inside and bring it to the outside with music and art. And lastly, to be honest with and love yourself. So, day one, we're starting with writing from the question of, what are you feeling? Then day two is, what are you thankful for? Day three, who do you love? Day four is, what's outside your window? And day five is, how would you change the world? Now, for us to get started, I suggest you head over to the next video called Chords with Kenna. Much of what I do in the exercises it requires some basic understanding of piano notes and what chords are. That is simply a family of notes grouped together. I'll delve a little more into what is a chord, how to create them, how to play them, how to string them together to make chord progressions, which are musical sentences that can blossom into songs. There are some things that I'd like you to remember while you're doing these exercises. Number one, I'm presenting these exercises as just a way to play around with notes, much like you play around with paint and colors. Yes, they are songwriting exercises and songs can come out of these exercises, but it could also just be a bunch of notes. There's no pressure for this to be anything else than what you want it to be. Number two, be easy on yourself. We aren't, writing, we aren't aiming to write a hit song, and we're not even really aiming to write a full song. So don't judge what you've done, especially while you're doing it, but rather breathe, be in the moment, and have fun. Because, number three, this is about process and creating. That means that I'm going to encourage you to do something that may seem odd in these times, and that is to not share what you're doing. I know, weird. But... Okay, yeah, you could share if you really want to, of course, uh, but this can be just for you and no one else. I personally have found a lot of freedom in creating without expectations. And so I've had that in mind when developing these exercises. What I mean is, I think that sometimes the pressure of sharing and performing, particularly online, takes us outside of ourselves and outside of the space and the moment of just doing the thing. When we create from the perspective of judgment, meaning we judge something if it's right or wrong, if it's good or bad, we get in the way of the experience itself. So I'll be reminding you throughout this entire series to breathe, be in the moment, and have fun. Because number four, if there's anything that I've learned as a forever student and a longtime teacher, is that if you like doing something, the chances are you're going to do it. And you might do it a lot, or at least consistently. And if you're doing that, the more natural everything is going to start to feel. So if things feel a little bit awkward at first, or maybe something doesn't make sense, shoot me a message or make a comment on the video, but also keep with it and see where you're at by the end of the series. We are all learning all the time. And lastly, number five, if you do decide that you would like to share what you've done, 
awesome. Pictures, audio, video, whatever. You can comment here on the video. You can head to my Instagram page. Uh, you can head to my website, kennabarima.com. You can send me an email at info at .com. Same goes if something doesn't make sense, if you need more information, uh, or you just want to say hi. Hi. I would really love to hear from you. So, are you ready? Should we get started? Let's do this. Hello. Welcome to Chords with Kenna. I'm going to go over a few things that you maybe already know about the piano. Piano notes, intervals, which is the distance between two notes, and how to put them together to make chords. If you already know the notes of the piano and you have a basic understanding of what chords are, then you can totally skip this video and head straight to day one of expressing yourself through music and art. For those of you that want to review though of notes and what a chord is, stick around. So, a chord is a group of notes that are together, kind of like a family. Depending on how those notes relate to each other, meaning how far apart they are from each other, the interval, it gives us the chord quality. Major, minor, augmented, diminished. Those are four qualities or types of chords that I like to use when I'm writing songs. Here, we're gonna focus on two types of those chords. That is major and minor, or as my students like to call them, happy and sad. So what we're going to do is look at the notes that make up a chord, but before we do that, I just want to review the names of the notes on the piano. All right, the notes of the piano are arranged in a repeating pattern of the first seven letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And the black notes tell us what the white notes are. Yet another pattern to notice is that the black notes are grouped into groups of two and three. The note A, our first note, can be found between the second and the third black notes of the group of three. And then it's just up the keyboard repeating the seven note pattern. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and so on. So, okay, onto chords. Chords can have any number of notes, but we are going to focus on the chord called the triad, which has three notes. And we're going to use the C major chord as an example. We have the root, the bottom note, the third, the middle note, and the fifth, which is the top note. The bottom note is called the root because it's the note that also gives the chord its name. Bottom note is the root. Makes sense, yeah? For example, the root note of the C major chord is the note C. The middle note is called the third. It's called the third because it's an interval of a third up from the root. One, two, three. The third is important because it tells us if the chord is major or minor. The third note of the C major chord is the note E. And then we have the top note, and it's called the fifth. It's called the fifth because maybe you guessed it. It is an interval of a fifth up from the root. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth note of the C major chord is G. C, E, G. C major chord. So let's make some more chords, shall we? And we'll use our right hand. So put your thumb, your one finger, on A. Really any note. And then count up five notes, one, two, three, four, five, and put your fifth note on that note, or your pinky, whichever you want to call it. Then place your middle note, or your middle finger, on a note, and voila, you have a chord. Or maybe here's a chord, or here's a chord, or here's a chord. That's it. That's all chords are. Okay, so there's lots of other things that I could teach you about chords, but here's what I'd like you to try. Be intuitive. Meaning, don't think about it too much. Create chords by just putting notes together and listening to the sound that they make when you play them together. I bet you're going to come up with all sorts of chords that I haven't even thought of. I want you to trust yourself and what you hear. I want you to put your finger on some notes, play those notes, listen, change the notes, decide if you like what you hear, write them down, and then give the chord a name. You can name your chords after whatever root note it is you want, or come up with funny names for your chords. You could call a chord by a color that it reminds you of. You know, maybe C major is a red chord. Whatever works for you is going to be cool. Uh, so you have some chords. If you play them one after another, stringing them together, you make chord progressions. Now, chord progressions are musical sentences. Much like sentences create stories, chord progressions create songs. So there you have it. Uh, my quick take on chords. If you have any questions, 
comment on this video below or head over to my website at kenaparima.com.